uh, life is not done to us. It is done for us. Right. And right. If, you, yeah. if you can start to notice like this hardship that you had to go through that basically ended your running career, mm -hmm. right? We initially, we start off blaming. Why was this done to me? Like, why did this happen to me? All right. How's it going, everybody? Xander Fryer, CEO and founder of High Impact Coaching and best-selling author here uh, with the, uh, we're just going to call you the fastest person I know. How about that? Uh, <laughs> sixth fastest man alive, Charles Clark, uh, also the CEO of Charles Clark International. Um, today, we're going to be digging into, uh, obviously, one of the things we're going to be digging into is the mindset that it actually takes uh, to become a world-class athlete and become the sixth fastest man. But more importantly, uh, you know, a lot of the transitions that you've made, Charles, into the entrepreneurial world and, and how you've been able to, you know, just make some amazing things happen there. Um, but I just want to welcome you to the show. Welcome, Charles. How hey, you doing, thanks, man? man. I'm excited to be on here. Beautiful. Excited to have you, brother. Um, you know, I'd love, I'd love if everybody could just kind of get a quick introduction to you, some of the things that you do now. Um, and then we can kind of go back to your story of getting started in entrepreneurship and, and you know, leaving the, the world-class athlete world. I think that'd be... Yeah, yeah, for sure. So my name is Charles Clark. And what I do is I show people how to thrive. I impact tens of thousands of lives each year with my Thrive events, uh, doing conferences, my own speaking events, uh, my own Thrive events. And uh, I also have like a couple of products as far as like the Thrive Planner, my, my coaching program. Um, the Thrive Coaching Program, yeah. and and yeah, man, it's I love the life that I'm that I'm called to live right now, and to be at a at a place where I didn't know existed past athletics is, is a beautiful thing, man. And I believe that everyone has the power within themselves and the mindset to accomplish those things if they just truly just pursue. Yeah, so I agree, and I love this. But yeah. I, think, I think there's a lot of people that so much, so much gets in their own way to getting to that point. And we'll dig into that. Um, may, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we start, let's go, let's go you know, four or five years back. What, yeah. what got you to the point of starting this business in this world after athletics? Because I think that in itself is actually a huge issue. I think a lot of world-class athletes, they, they pursue their you know, quote-unquote life dream of becoming a world-class athlete not necessarily realizing that it's even when you become like the best in the world, that's maximum going to be like one third of your actual life. Wow. Yeah. Right? It, it, it's so true. You know? Uh, and I, I think for me where I was at, it, it happened to, you know, my transition wasn't the easiest transition at all. You yeah. Know, I was on top of the world, six fastest men in the world. And I'm getting ready to, to sign a multi-million dollar deal uh, being one of the fastest runners in the world. Um, one year left before turning pro, and I suffered a debilitating injury. I literally tore my quad completely. Yeah. Um, and um, that came with a lot of, of uncertainty. That came with my coach no longer wanting to train me. That came with a relationship to end. And that came with me moving back at home with my mom, trying to figure out my life. And How, was, how old were you at yeah, this point? I was about 20 three years old, yeah. 22, 23 years old. And, and this happened. And you talk about like, you work hard, yeah. like from, from, from 17, 18 years old, really knowing what you're called to do in this world. And like that's your that, whole that, identity to become, right. become the sixth fastest man in the world. Like you can't like, that's gotta be, you have to be all in. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that, that's the sad part that most people get stuck into. Yeah. They think that this is all I got and I want to get there, but I, I want to, I want to land and address the story up for you really quickly. That, that, um, you know, and I remember that time I was sitting at home uh, at the bottom of my mom's steps and she asked me, she said, what do you need me to do to fix this Charles? And I was like, well, well, first of all, it's a mom's like duty to want to, you know, love on their kid and to take care of them, right? Yeah. right? They, they naturally do that. But the biggest problem was I was a grown man 
trying to get my life together. And so like, I'm looking thanks, at her like, Yo, thanks, mom. hold on now, you know, like this, this is my, this is my time to make up, make up the difference. And I think a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, if you want to like change your life, if you want to hit that reset button, you got to understand you are fully responsible. And when I took that ownership, it gave me back the control because at that point I decided what happens next. Yeah. And I, I lost the mindset of the blame game. Here's the things that we kind of go through when we, when we deal with tragedy, when we deal with uh, trauma or anything like that. There's three truths that we can hold on to, right? And the first truth is the irrational truth, uh, right? And that comes with the blame game. That comes with the ego, ego inflated. And then the second one is the rational truth, you're right? You know, it's rational for you to think this way. And yeah. then the, the third one is the developmental truth, the one that literally sets you free and matures you. You kind of think about it like a, a caterpillar. You know, when a caterpillar goes into cocoon phase, it literally has to die off to the old self to become the butterfly. Yeah. Right? It no longer wants to be associated with the life that they used to live so that they can live the life that they're called to live. Right? Yeah. And that's the biggest difference. So you go through all these pains. You go through the irrational truth. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe somebody did this to me. I can't believe, man, that, that my life is where it is right now. It's, it's, it's a goddamn gone shame, right? You go through all of that. You go through the rational truth. Man, um, I don't understand how things are going to get better for me. Huh, how, how, can this, how can this happen? Yeah. Then you go to the, to the developmental truth. I'm responsible. It's on me. The injury was my fault. I take, I take that because now I'm going to control what happens next. Yeah. What and can I do to move forward? Yeah. 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 And, and stop looking at your story. Like, you know, it's the end of the world because you got to learn to change your narrative. If you want to create us the story that you want to listen to. Yeah. I love that. So you had a really tough break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't, this is an easy transition. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You, you're, know? you were kind of forced into this, <laughs> but this is, I think this is, a, you know, this is an important thing for everybody to understand as well. I think, you know, just like you mentioned, you can take that moment and you can view that moment as being, um, you know, like, I, I think it's, it was Byron Katie that always talks about like, uh, life is not done to us. It is done for us. Right. And right. If, you, yeah. if you can start to notice like this hardship that you had to go through that basically ended your running career, Mm -hmm. right? We initially, we start off blaming, why was this done to me? Like, why did this happen to me? And then it is, you know, obviously, like four or five years down the line, now we can look back and see like, how that was actually for me. Yeah. Right. But sometimes you need that space to actually see that, right? So you have to be willing to listen. Yeah. And you know, that was that was actually one of the things that I had posted yesterday. I said, um, I said, listening does a couple of things. Listening matures you. Listening gives you a new perspective. Listening humbles you. Listening calms your mind. And listening guides you to make an impactful decision. If you don't take the time to just shut up and listen, listen to people, listen to your heart, you're going to be stuck at the same place you started year after year after year wondering why nothing is changing yeah and so i literally had to i had to look at my blank walls in my mom's house and and ask why and then i moved from that place of why to understanding it was good for me yeah. and so you know speaking to coaches that are out there if you really want to triple your income you know double your income 10 times your income first of all you got to be quiet you got to listen and then you got to use that story that nearly broke you to build what you got. Yeah. And I took what pained me to build my business. I literally talk about my pain and get paid $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 to, to go to a conference and do something like this. And so, like, that's the beauty of tragedy. No, excuse me. That's the beauty of purpose. Yeah. Purpose it, the, the, the Latin word for purpose is propositum, and it means design. And so one of the things like I, I talk about, like I, I, when I think about design, I, I think about my grandma's sweet potato pie. Now, if you got a grandma like my grandma, she throws down in the kitchen. 
she doesn't even use a measuring cup and she's just whipping it up and all that good stuff. And I, re I remember when I was younger and when I was looking at her in the kitchen doing, doing something that was so beautiful and, and so messy at the same time. And, uh, you know, when grandma gives you the whisk to, to lick the, yeah, the remnants yeah. of the, you know, the, the cake batter or whatever it might be, uh, there was a moment where, where she was like, something's missing. And I'm trying to understand, like, okay, well, you know, well, what are we going to do from this? I think you got to start the whole thing over. And then she looked at me and she said, baby, all you need is a little bit of salt because that's going to bring all the flavors together. And, and that, that little moment that she told me that, it made me understand that the salt is good for you. That pain that you go through is good for you. And you got to find a way to not compartmentalize it because when you compartmentalize salt, it's a bitter yeah. experience. The pain, you, pain is what right. gives success its true flavor, just like yeah. salt, man. <laughs> yeah, just, just like the salt. And so I, I incorporate the salt in everything that I do. Yeah, I love that, man. So talk to me, talk to me about you know, the next, you said four years, right, to building your business to where it is right now. Talk yep. to me about that journey because I think it's, you know, uh, one of the things that I love everybody out there in the coaching world hearing, you know, I, think it's, I think it's important, especially if you're just starting your coaching business out, mm -hmm. to, to understand, like, have, have real expectations of what it actually takes to build a business, um, you know, in this day and age. Because I think there's so much unrealistic stuff out there. Right? Right. They, see, they see this and see that, like, this person built a six-figure business in three months, and this person built a seven-figure business in three weeks, and an yeah. eight-figure business in 47 minutes, right? Like, yeah. like, what, like, talk to me about that process for you of getting to where you are right now. Well, for one, I would say you got to – trust the process and more so accept the process if you ever want to make progression yeah when you when you accept the process you're seeing progression is going to happen and like my progression was i'll, I'll start just from the speaking aspect right yeah i literally started speaking at public schools i created a nonprofit in my in my community back at home during that time I would ask schools to, hey, can I come speak to your students? Yeah. So I literally started speaking for free in the classrooms. You started at step one. <laughs> step one. Step one. Step <laughs> one. Speak in the classrooms <laughs> to middle and high school students yeah. for free. I kept doing it. Kept doing it. And, and then next thing you know, it, I was like, why do people keep wanting to hear me speak for free? So then I was like, wait a minute. I can start making money doing this. So hold on, hold on. There's something here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me charge five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. So I, I said, okay. Um, well, from now on, hey, if you want to book with me, it's gonna be five hundred dollars, right? And so schools kept booking me. I yeah. Kept getting booked. They and were like, like Charles, oh. Charles, we tried to give you six hundred dollars last week, and you wouldn't even take it. Now you're asking right. five hundred. Like, <laughs> you want five hundred? Okay, we'll give you five hundred. We'll give, we'll give I, you five. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, five hundred dollars. All right, let me, let, me, let me try, let me raise the stakes. Let me say $2,000 now. Yeah. So I, I, I extended out from just speaking at schools now to now corporate companies. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll pay for it. And I'll never forget a time I, I said to myself, I want to get paid $4,500. And the first time somebody asked me how much you charge, I literally started stuttering. Yeah. Like, you know, I was, I was nervous to say such a large amount. And, and they were like, Dang, Charles, that's a lot of money, but let me talk to my director and see if we can afford something like that. And she, she called me back the next day and she said, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. And, and I remember just, um, I believe this was like a year and a half ago at this point, um, kind of fast forwarding. And a, a school, a college, a university wanted me to speak. And um, we get to talk and we're going through the consultation and I'm you know, showing, hey, I would love to do this presentation for your, for your staff, uh, not for your staff, for your students. And, um, and I was like, well, do you have a budget? She said, Charles, don't even worry about the budget. Just tell me what, how much you charge. And I said, $7,500. And she said, oh, that'll be no, no problem, but just bill us twice because we want you to speak at the different campuses. That have. <laughs> so, so literally, so for one, you got to understand the, the process of, going through the struggle of it right yeah. to build something it's it's going to take work and then you're going to have doubt in the process and then you realize that this is where you're supposed to be so now you start to live in that work and when you start to live in that work you get confidence clarity comes before confidence if you don't have clarity in your business you can't have the confidence to succeed in it 
Yep. Right. So I, I, I literally started from zero to, to making the desired income that I want. And, and, and my, my biggest thing is even in the midst of all that, trying to get paid and, you know, getting your six figure, seven figure business, I just urge coaches and speakers and writers to make sure that impact is over income. Yeah. Right. So that doesn't mean necessarily mean that every time I speak, I get, you know, let's say, you know, a thousand dollars. Right. That's not the case. If somebody says, Charles, we want you to speak. I'm, I'm looking at, hey, is this a nonprofit? What is the cause? Right. Or do I need bills? Do I need to take care of my bills? Right. Do I do what does my family need to eat? You know, is this convenient for me? Is this something local that that I can give them a little discount because they don't have a larger budget? I'm looking at all those things. So like, don't get so caught up in like, this is my price. I'm not bending. Nah, bend. Get paid. Do what you love because the impact is over the income at the end of the day. Yeah. So I'm willing to speak for free still to this day. If somebody says, hey, Charles, we got this event. Let's see how we can work something out. Yep. Oh. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, we froze for a bit, but let's, uh, I think we're good. Yeah, keep the impact over the income. Cool. Awesome. Love it, man. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things, uh, it, especially when you're building, when you're, when you're building, whether it's a speaking business, coaching business, whatever it is, you know, if, if income becomes the priority for you, you're never going to make it through the tough times. Right. Right. Just like you and I were talking about a little bit off air, right? It's like to get to this point, there's a lot of pivots. There's a lot of tough times. There's a lot of crap that you got to go through. So if income is the true driver for you, right? That's not right. strong enough to make it through the downtimes, right. through the trenches, yeah. through the cracks. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, my, my next question for you is what were some of the toughest times you had in the business as you were getting it up and up and going? Man, you know, I think it, it I would say, uh, brand consistency. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you put a website up and, and then it's not who you, who, what looks like you, but you created it. So, you know, you, you go through that pain of, all right, well, how, what, do I, what do I need to understand about fonts? What do I need to understand about colors? Yeah. And who am I appealing to in my demographic? So I think one of the pains was definitely uh, developing a site that represents me. And, and through that, it's like, okay, a site that represents me will, for one, have what I do in the forefront. Yeah. Right? And so sometimes we can get so lost into like just creating something and it looks like a bad representation of who you are. Um, so I, I would say if I wanted my price, if I'm saying I'm worth this much, but my website is saying I'm worth less, yeah. that's it. That's one of the issues that I had, right? Yeah. So I couldn't be coming to companies saying, hey, well, I'm worth a million dollars, then you know, my site looks like trash. <laughs> You know, yeah. so that process for me was really learning um, what, who am I, right? Yeah. And but I think, what, I think that's even more important. It's not even just like how the website represents you, but the, the actual like who you are. Yeah. Because right? moving forward, you know, one of my good buddies, Todd Lamb, who runs a, a um, uh, Pure Life Organics, which is, you know, doing 60 million. Yeah. Says every business moving forward, like, uh, you have to have a presence online that has to speak, has to have a personal like connection with people. Meaning, yeah. yeah. Meaning with yeah. people. Because otherwise, there's like in the online world, it's never been easier to start an online business. Right. right? So people, everybody's a skeptic, right? right? So you have, to, you have to be able to actually connect with people online through your website, through your social, through everything. Otherwise, nobody's going to trust you because yeah. you're just another one of those people <laughs> yeah yeah you have you have a you have a what you have a domain and yeah somebody's mad at you because you took it <laughs> yeah because yep. funny, do something funny, funny story about that <laughs> before i bought xanderfryer.com actually right after i bought xanderfryer.com this was like four years ago or three and a half years ago or whatever uh -huh. i get a text message from one of my good buddies uh from from ucla from university with me he goes hey did do you own xanderfryer.com and i was like yes and he goes damn and i was like why? And he's like, I was trying to buy all of our domains of all of our friends so I could post incriminating pictures of them. Oh, 
So, so much. big lesson for everybody out there. If you don't own your name.com, yeah, go buy it right now. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the sucky thing is, um, somebody, somebody purchased my name when I, when I reached a certain status with athletics, Yeah, they literally take all the athletes names so that you can like purchase it at a higher price. And they, and they sell them back to them. Wow. Yeah, they sell it back to you. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Uh, that's awesome. Anyways, so um, so I obviously like branding. I think branding is a huge issue for a lot of people. Yeah, um, know, knowing your colors, you know what what colors represent me, or not just me, but what what do I want to express when people yeah. come to my site, my website? And I think colors are so important. I think the fonts are very important, like the size of the fonts, the boldness of it. You know, the the pictures that you display. Is it high quality, low quality? Um, all of those things equal price point. So like what I, what I tell people is, do you want to be um, McDonald's, Applebee's, or Ruth Chris, right? McDonald's would be, you know, your, your quick and easy $5, $5 deal. You know, your Applebee's would be, you know, $20, $30 price point. But then your Ruth Chris would be $100 plus, dollars, you know, fancy champagne. And so what it, where is your business and where do you want it to be? and making sure that everything is consistent from your website to your IG page, to your prices, to the contracts that you send out, yeah. um, to the process, the, the emails, all of those things, making sure it's aligned to either McDonald's, Applebee's, or Ruth Chris. Beautiful, I love it, man. Um, let me ask you this, if you, were to give, if you were to give one piece of advice back to the, you starting your business fresh, mm -hmm. right? What would that one piece of advice be? If I could give myself one advice, I would say do, I would say know what you want to do at the beginning of the year and don't change it until you see results. Now, yeah. results can be anything from failure or success, but stop changing everything every quarter because you, you're not seeing what you want or you, you get this new idea. Stay consistent. Yeah. And one of the best ways to be consistent, and you know, this is something that I have in my Thrive Planner, is you do three measurable activities every single day. And those three measurable activities should drive massive success in your business. Yeah. Don't change it. I know you want to say, no, I want to wake up later on in the day, right? Like, do something that simple, right? But stay consistent because in that consistency, you build momentum. Yeah. I like, I think this is probably, that's probably one of the most important lessons that I think is underrated in entrepreneurship. Right. And yeah. I, I'm guessing you, you learned some of this becoming a world-class athlete, right? Because it's like, you'll have something that oh. works and there'll be the new fancy, shiny object over here, the new fancy thing over here. Yeah. Dude, if it's like, if you just hit this, if you do the right things consistently, you yeah. might not, you might not see the result right now, but you'll see it six months, eight months, yeah. 12 months, 18 yeah. months from now that's when you actually see the result because your momentum starts to just exponentiate. Right. I mean, we, we live in a popcorn culture. We want, we yeah. want it right now. And I, I think like the microwave minute, I like to call it. Right. You got, right, you got right. a microwave minute to make this shit happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about, it's about, to be, about to be over. Yeah. Right? But, uh, uh, but I think where that hit for me uh, was my freshman year in college. I, uh, I was, at nationals and i was seated number i think at number one or number two coming in at 200 and i seen my my uh, teammate walter dix uh do this special warm-up and i was like yo let me let me, let me get some of that magic of that warm-up i'm trying to you know trying to break a world record here and so i do his warm-up routine and come to the finals seated number one or two i pull my hamstring <laughs> because i changed because i changed, changed my routine yeah right Stop, stop changing something because it looks good for somebody else because you're going to end up messing yourself up at the end of the day. That, I think that is a huge lesson. A big lesson. <laughs> Bruh, I got to do, I have to do me. I have to listen to my voice. And that's one of the things that I, you know, with, with the workshops that I do, find your voice because that's going to generate the income that you need. If you're always listening to someone else, turning down your light, letting other people shine over you because you're not listening to your intuition, you're always going to be at a place of wanting to change and not be consistent. I love that, man. Good stuff. 
What's, what's, what's next for, for Charles Clark? What's coming up for you over 2020? What are your big goals? Oh, man, uh, to get my book, my book out. So we've been working on this book since I lived back at home with my mom. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's a really big project. Really excited about that one. Uh, my heart and soul is in, in that one. But I, I think uh, really with the Thrive Funder that we have, we, we want the world to have access to being consistent. Uh, having ground, being grounded and having confidence to actually start something. So uh, uh, the Thrive Fund is a big product of mine that we're, we're pushing out. And I think, you know, just with the Thrive events that, that I'm doing, um, my biggest thing is to, I want to see other people make it. Like I, I crave for that because when they win, I win, right? Yeah. And I, I, I want to be in a society of people who aren't afraid to celebrate each other through their victories. Like, because there, there's so much hate going on in this world and there, there's no, there's love, love wins over all of that. So if, if we can just have a, a, a group of people who can just love each other and their successes and their, and their, and their, and their, uh, their wins and even in their losses, loving each other, guiding them, helping yeah. them get to another level of success, man, we end up winning at the end of the day too, yeah. you know? So it's you know, so it's so funny to me because I think when you when you look at like the different tiers of levels of success in entrepreneurship and business and um, you know one of the things that I've noticed which it's very contradictory it's like the people at the bottom who are the least successful are the most scarcity minded stuck in their own world concerned about yeah. getting you know getting uh, the next paycheck or making sure that they get theirs and the people mm -hmm. as you go up it's the people get more grateful. Right. They become more giving and more supportive of everybody else because they know, hey, there's a shit ton to go around for everybody. Let's make sure you get yours first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I'm, pro I'm pretty sure I'll get mine eventually, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> right. Yeah, when, when you operate in the space of abundance, is different. Yeah. Right? Um, because lack becomes a lot for you. Uh, and I, when I think about the place where I was at, mm -hmm. I had my mom. I had to move from, from lack to abundance, even though it looked like lack, right? Yeah. Uh, even though it said I didn't have a, uh, my own place to rest my head, even though I'm, I'm living at my home with my mom, I'm, I'm borrowing her car to go to, to speaking engagements. I, um, I don't have my life together. I had to look at that as abundance. And, and when that became abundance, new doors opened up, literally. Bro, literally life-changing experiences happen. So that's the, that's the beauty and, you know, that's the big difference in, in scarcity and abundance mindset. I love it. What's, uh, what's, what's one last piece of advice that you would give to, to any starting entrepreneurs out there uh, that you think that they need to be aware of? <sighs> what they need to be aware of? themselves um and when i say that i'm i'm just going to say i want to repeat what I, I recently said to you is you got to listen to yourself because when you start to to zoom on the on the outside and you fail to, to realize your cool idea what really got you ticking i'm talking about literally to that that manifestation that happened in your, in your mind in a blink of a second. And you saw all the texture, you saw the detail, you saw the book, you saw the pages, you saw the website. And, and to literally downplay that for somebody else, for somebody else's dream, for somebody else's success that you see, and to try to take theirs and make it yours, that is the stupidest thing you can do in your life. Yeah. I'm just, I just wanna be real. So stop downplaying your ideas and do you love it yeah awesome man charles clark thanks for thanks for joining us i um, super excited to get this out to everybody where can people learn more about you everything you're doing from a speaking perspective everything you're doing with thrive uh where can people learn more about you yeah just follow me on instagram at the charles clark uh t-h-e-c-h-a-r-l-e-s-c-l-a-r-k and I love to connect with you guys. Always do Ask Charles. So you can always uh, send me a message in, in my DM, share with me your, your uh, insecurity or your, your struggle, and um, ask me your question, and I'd love to answer it for you guys. Beautiful. Thanks, Charles.
Uh, and if everybody, everybody out there in podcast land, if you want to catch these live, be sure to join these live in our Facebook group at xanderfriar.com forward slash FB group. Uh, and if any of you guys want our help helping you get to uh, six figures or seven figures in your coaching business, go ahead and go to xanderfriar.com forward slash programs to check out our programs and see if one of our programs might be right for you. Uh, thanks again, Charles. Looking forward to connecting with you more and getting you back on this podcast, man. Thanks, Brian.